we're going back to Raymond's mystery location, and we think we know where he is. Though I don't know. This, I don't know mm. either. That's a pretty slim comment. Okay, so the clue as to where I am is this Vernon Duke song from 1934 describing this place as canyons of steel. So did you two in the studio figure it out? Mm, uh, that was a tough quite. one, Raymond. I don't think okay, that's enough. Okay, let's pull back on the camera for the big reveal. Oh, it looks like Manhattan, perhaps? This that is hard. Is. Welcome to New York. Yeah. Hey! And the lyrics, glittering crowds and shimmering clouds in canyons of steel came from the song Autumn in New York. Oh, We're in the most populous oh, city in the U.S. and it's one of the world centers of commerce, finance, culture, and entertainment. And here we're looking south from Midtown Manhattan, 42 floors up, where I'm staying. The beginning of the gay rights movement, better known as Stonewall, got its start here in 1969. And we'll take you there for a tour in the historic Greenwich Village. And later in the program, we'll have the largest LGBT marching band ever in New York's world-famous Halloween parade. All that coming up later in the program. Neat. We'll get back to Raymond, but first, Jay talks with Tom Grissinger about sperm donation. I'm Marlon Cumming and you're watching Outlook Video. Tom Grissinger is a gay sperm donor who became a dad. He has helped at least four different lesbian women with their dream of becoming mothers. Joining us today with Tom is one of the success stories, Rebecca and Ava McDonald, mother and daughter, who have a fascinating story to tell us. Welcome, Tom. Ava, Rebecca. Thank you. A quick question, Tom. Um, mm -hmm. What was your motivation to become a, a sperm, sperm donor? Well, I always wanted to be a dad. Uh, when I came out to my dad many years ago, I was about 23, he said, you know, I have no problem with it. The only thing that's disappointing is you'll never know what it's like to be a father. <laughs> and so I told him then, I said, you know, there's other ways of becoming a father. So I always wanted to have kids. I even thought about getting married just to have kids. Fortunately, I got smart and didn't do that. Does he, does he like the idea now he has four grandchildren? Oh, yeah. Does he yeah. call them grandchildren? Oh, yes, definitely. They play an active role in the kid's life, and uh, it's a little overwhelming. They never imagined four. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Rebecca, what was your motivation for choosing a, a gay uh, sperm donor as opposed to, you know, any other sperm donor? Well, being lesbian, my partner and I wanted um, to have somebody who understood what we've been through. Um, and we always thought it would be the perfect situation, you know, and get a gay man. And um, also Leland's bank offered known donors, which meant that we would be able to know who the father was um, before the child was 18. And that's pretty difficult to find. So. Yeah, so there, I imagine there's a lot of anonymous, but you, were, exactly. you didn't want to go that route. No. You wanted to know and have. Now, mm -hmm. what was the agreement between the two of you when you, you know, parental rights, et cetera? Well, the way that the program's set up is you sign away, the, the donor sign away all legal rights and mm -hmm. obligations. So, you know, I can't come back and say this is my kid and suddenly take the kid away. So it provides a lot of comfort for the, mm -hmm. the couple because yeah. they know they're, they're protected as well. Okay. Ava, uh, what do you got to say in all this? I'm just glad my mom picked him. Oh, good. <laughs> and how old are you, Ava? I am nine and almost and a half. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Do um do you are you out with um are there other children like you at school that um or do you do you tell them that that you know you're a special you're a special yes. girl? Yes, and they and they uh is there any curiosity or anything like that? Mm, sometimes. Sometimes. Mm, okay. Um what was uh some of the considerations uh Rebecca that you had in in deciding who was going to be, you know, the father of your child? Well, obviously we wanted somebody healthy. Um, my partner wanted somebody maybe that came from the same ethnic background, but that really became inconsequential when we went through the um, donor book <laughs> of all the prof profiles. And, you know, when you're looking at so many different people, what it boiled down to me, and it had always been important to me, was that the man we chose was a nice guy who wanted children. You know, he cared about kids, wanted to be an active role, you know, have an active role in the child's life. and. Leland said, then this is the guy you want. That's and go excellent. With him. That's fun. And um, now you had some considerations way back when, I guess it was in the early 2000s, uh, that, you, that there was some problem with being a, a, a gay sperm donor? Well, a couple years, uh, many years ago, I guess it was, the FDA had decided they wanted to ban gay and lesbian, or gay sperm donors because they were treating uh, sperm not unlike blood donations. 
And so there was a chance for us to go speak in front of the FDA panel and kind of, my role was the put the face on what a gay sperm donor looked like, kind of a poster boy for it. And so we, we spoke, we didn't fully win, they didn't ban gay sperm donors, but they didn't recommend it. Now there, there's a difference between um, a, a known sperm donor and an anonymous sperm donor. Mm -hmm. And um, is there some distinction that the FDA has between these or some regulations over these things? Uh, not really. No. Because, how, I mean, how could you tell? And one thing I was like, would they ask you before when you come in there, are you gay or you're straight? Yes. They do ask you that, mm -hmm. okay. Just like I guess bank, if yeah. you're like donating blood. Exactly. exactly. That's oh, okay. exactly yeah. the same and they'll disqualify you. So, Most sperm banks don't So you weren't concerned donors. at all with any of the um, no. HIV issues Absolutely or not. nothing? Nothing We like spoke that. with Leland about what his policy was for testing and retesting and... And what was that policy? Um, so you were tested when you... When I first, when you first started right, depositing, and then, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> and then six months later you were retested. After the last deposit. Exactly. Um, yeah. And, you know, and by the time I got around to using it, it already three years had already passed. Oh, wow. Um, from when he had donated to when I made use of it. So he was still in touch with Leland and still knew that his status was negative. And, you know, that, that really was never a concern. Well, that's about all the time we have time mm -hmm. for. But I really appreciate you sharing your story, coming in to, uh, to see us, and saying hello to our Outlook video crew. Um, thanks again. Thanks, Jay. And if you would like more information to find out about this process, you can contact the sperm donation services of GaySpermBank.com. It would be the, the place you would go. And then we also have information on the screen. Thanks. Thank you. I'm Candace Kane, and you're watching Outlook Video.